December 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 28 from the Old Testament. The wicked person flees when there is no one pursuing, but the righteous person is as confident as a lion. When a country is rebellious, it has many princes, but by someone who is discerning and knowledgeable, order is maintained. A poor person who oppresses the weak is like a driving rain without food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law contend with them. Evil people do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it all. A poor person who walks in his integrity is better than one who is perverse in his ways, even though he is rich. The one who keeps the law is a discerning child, but a companion of gluttons brings shame to his parents. The one who increases his wealth by increasing interest gathers it for someone who is gracious to the needy. The one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer, is an abomination. The one who leads the upright astray in an evil way will himself fall into his own pit but the blameless will inherit what is good. A rich person is wise in his own eyes, but a discerning poor person can evaluate him properly. When the righteous rejoice, great is the glory, but when the wicked rise to power, people are sought out. The one who covers his transgressions will not prosper, but whoever confesses them and forsakes them will find mercy. Blessed is the one who is always cautious, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into evil. Like a roaring lion or a roving bear, so is a wicked ruler over a poor people. The prince who is a great oppressor lacks wisdom, but the one who hates unjust gain will prolong his days. The one who is tormented by the murder of another will flee to the pit, let no one support him. The one who walks blamelessly will be delivered, but whoever is perverse in his ways will fall at once. The one who works his land will be satisfied with food, but whoever chases daydreams will have his fill of poverty. A faithful person will have an abundance of blessings, but the one who hastens to gain riches will not go unpunished. To show partiality is terrible, for a person will transgress over the smallest piece of bread. The stingy person hastens after riches and does not know that poverty will overtake him. The one who reproves another will in the end find more favor than the one who flatters with the tongue. The one who robs his father and mother and says there is no transgression is a companion to the one who destroys. The greedy person stirs up dissension, but the one who trusts in the Lord will prosper. The one who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but the one who walks in wisdom will escape. The one who gives to the poor will not lack, but whoever shuts his eyes to them will receive many curses. When the wicked gain control, people hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. God, yesterday we were talking about telling people the truth out of love and if we truly love them not the way of the world but if we truly loved them like you loved us then we would be able to not only tell people that but also hear it from other people and in today's proverbs we see a lot about the righteous people and what they are to do and what they aren't to do and it says in today's reading well a couple places but one specifically The one who reproves another will in the end find more favor than the one who flatters with the tongue. And it was interesting because I was just reading about this online about how you can love someone into hell. (laughs) Now, you choose us. Um, Our salvation is given to us by you. It's not something we can earn. Uh, But we can also, so I think that statement is a little bit far-fetched, but uh, we can love somebody and say we're so concerned about their feelings that we don't tell them the truth and there was a lot of people in this um, article I was reading about do we tell them the truth what does that look like how is that Christian what what does love look like Uh, and somebody wrote in and said something that I thought was really interesting that 
your relationship with the person is in direct relationship with how you're going to interact in that tough love situation. He says, I look at relationships like a bank. By showing grace and love to one another, we invest in the account. And in holding each other accountable, we draw from that same account. The exercise of grace builds the relationship, which in turn builds the ability to speak more freely and openly with one another. If we want to be able to tough love someone, a lot of grace is needed to have been invested to or in order to withdraw. Otherwise, you just have overdrawn the account. And I thought that was a really wise way of looking at that. If I see somebody I barely know on Facebook and uh, they're saying something that is out of line with what you have taught me in the Bible, going to them and saying, this isn't right according to the Bible, I don't have a lot of credibility with that person in being able to say that because I haven't built up that relationship. There's not that grace. There's not that love there. So even though yesterday we talked a lot about talking in truth, one of the big areas that you talk about throughout the entire Bible is relationships, relationships with each other, relationships obviously with you. And we need to, just like this gentleman was saying, we need to invest in those relationships um, for many reasons. One, because we have accountability with that person. Uh, two, we also receive uh, credit or credibility with that person as they get to know us. So if I say to them, gosh, you know, that's not biblical because in John 3, blah, 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 it says <laughs> they're more likely to believe me because I've built up this relationship with them. God, allow us to grow in relationships. It's one of the big areas you and I are working on for next year. It's one of my big goals. Uh, because I don't like relationships. <laughs> um, I would rather be by myself. You, me, we're good. But in the Bible, you're really clear. I don't get to be by myself. Uh, it's about community and it's about relationships. And so I really need to intentionally work on, on what does that look like for me to have relationships with people. Uh, to have a voice in their life. I don't do relationships very well. So this will be, <laughs> this will be really interesting. Uh, and I don't do relationships really well because we're messy as human beings. And I really struggle with that messiness part. Fully understanding I'm part of that mess. Fully understanding. Um, but I know that with your guidance and all that I've learned about our relationship, God, especially in the last couple of years as, you know, crazy things have happened in my life. I think I'm better equipped now to, to tackle human relationships and get beyond just the surface relationships that most of us in the world have. In fact, we have tons of friends and social networks that we've never even met. Um, and sometimes those relationships are deeper than people we actually know in our real life. So God, help us to work on these relationships. So we do have credibility in our friends' lives, whether they be Christian or non-Christian, uh, that we have a voice in their lives. and just as important, just equally important, that they have a voice in ours. You know, it's such a blessing that I have uh, more than one accountability partner. I have an amazing mentoring uh, guide person uh, who teaches me and also disciplines me when I, <laughs> I need to be. Uh, and, and all of those people uh, speak volumes into my life and I listen to them a lot closer than I do with other people. God help people not only find the people that they're to be in relationships with, but help them grow in those relationships with, with trust, with grace, with mercy, with kindness, uh, with knowledge of who their heart really is. I think that's one of the areas that people get in trouble with relationships is they start picking people apart, forgetting what their true heart is really like. And I've had multiple conversations with people where I said, but you know her true heart. You know that that's not what she meant. Or he would never do that intentionally to hurt you. You know what his true heart is like. So God, help help us always remember who, who gave these people the heart in the first place. And what their true heart really is. People, for the most part, aren't intentionally mean, intentionally evil, and aren't set out to, to hurt us. Uh, allow our compassion to come in into a relationship so that it can grow and it can grow deeper. 
Uh, and then God, allow those words that you need us to say in those relationships to be said, to set aside our own egos, our own concerns, and be able to speak freely into people's lives. And then to receive that same from the people who we're in a relationship with. God, I am truly thankful that my first and foremost relationship is with you and that you teach me so much about patience and understanding and definitely grace in a relationship of of realizing what that looks like in a healthy way. I just hope that And I pray that this coming year that I can apply it to those human relationships that you have generously brought into my life. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.